That's what Christmas is all about. Giving, sharing, and caring for your fellow man. Or cousin, as the case may be. <laughs> yeah, and let's not forget yeah. miracles. I think we just saw one. We sure did. Yeah, you know what? This truly showed me what Christmas is all about. Yeah. For real. Good. Ooh. Let me get that. Wow. I'm sorry to bother you, but my wife is pregnant, and we have no place to sleep. Oh. Could we stay in your barn tonight? Hell, Hell no! no. <laughs> During the holidays, there are moments we like and dislike. But the moments we enjoy the most are the ones we all just like, like, like. Enjoy KFC's festive big bar. Two pieces of crispy chicken, two spicy wings, fries, a buttery biscuit, chocolate chip cookie, a 22-ounce drink, and our new Cheesy Mat. All for only $11, including VAT. KFC Nassau, it's finger-licking good. <laughs> Cheese. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. up in the Bahamas tonight, first at 6, a unified busing system on the New Year's agenda. Away from home for the holidays, the dream trip from Bahamas Air to some special children. And why the music makers junk a new group was a no-show on Bay Street. The Bahamas tonight, first at 6, starts now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keisha Adderley, and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, first at 6. Topping the news this evening, final preparations are underway for the launch of a pilot project which will drive the implementation of a unified busing system. The initiative is expected to play a pivotal role in improving the overall transportation sector. Transport Minister, the Honorable Renwood Wells, says the project will be launched in early January. A six months program. Uh, as everyone knows, it's a six-month pilot program. At the end of that pilot program, we will know what one franchise is worth. And based on that, the Bahamas government will then move towards a unified bus system. So by the end of June, this pilot will be done. Uh, January 3rd is our launch date. Now, Minister Wells also noted that the concerns of taxi drivers linked to members' license plates will also be addressed in the new year. This after officials from the Taxi Cab Union complained that members' license plates are the same color as private charter bus plates and self-drive vehicles. Also that private charter buses are providing the same service as taxi cabs, which under the law should be reserved just for taxi cab drivers. Transport Minister, the Honorable Randwood Wells, on that. The government will in January um, look as to how we will be issuing um, the requisite plates in line with the recommendations of both unions, the taxi cab union as well as delivery and tour car union. We've met with both unions, met with their presidents and their executives, and they have given us their recommendations as to how they would like to see the industry move forward and how many plates they believe that the industry increase in plates that the industry can sustain. Minister of Immigration, the Honorable Ellsworth Johnson, advising members of the public to request identification from anyone who comes to their home claiming to be represent a representative of a law enforcement agency. His warning comes after an early morning home invasion back on December 16th, where four armed men presented themselves as immigration officers and went to a Balfour Avenue home where they robbed and assaulted residents, leaving one man in hospital. He's urging residents to exercise their rights. When persons come to your home, whether they be any of the enforcement agencies, 
you have a right to ask them to produce, as the director said, proper identification. If you are unsure as to who is knocking on your door, you say to them, just hold on a moment. I want to call the Royal Bahamas Police Force. I want to con or I want to contact the minister or the director of, of immigration or the immigration department. My number is 376-7599, 376-7723. To ensure that the person who is on the other side of your door or who is approaching your property is the right person. Now, the immigration minister says it's his hope that police will not rest until the perpetrators are captured, calling the incident unacceptable. It is despicable what you did to those persons they did not deserve. And I'm depending on our police force uh, and on our immigration department to search them out and bring them to justice so that they may be placed before the courts and the right retribution and consequences can be had to them. Police are refuting the claims of a video circulating on social media describing a violent incident, the use of knives and the conduct of police officers at yesterday's Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade. Police want to say that the incident described in that video did not take place during or after the Junkanoo Parade. Police say that three men were taken into custody in connection with a minor incident while one of the men was injured, treated at hospital and discharged. Police are encouraging members of the public not to spread false information which creates fear in the minds of the public and they're encouraging residents to go out and enjoy the New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade as the event will be properly policed. Meantime, the Commissioner of Police says that he's pleased with the performance of his officers at the Boxing Day Parade and is thanking them for their service. Well, still ahead tonight, if you thought Boxing Day's theme was a treat, wait until you see what the Valley Boys have planned for New Year's. That story is right after the break. The holidays are a time to celebrate our connectedness, to strengthen the ties that bind us, that make us, well, family. At Commonwealth Bank, we're your neighbors, your friends, and yes, we're your family. Wishing you warm and sincere best wishes for a happy holiday and a prosperous new year from your family at Commonwealth Bank. Merry Christmas to you. If I can win something for somebody, it'll be my mom. It will be students who graduated and still struggling to find and make ends meet. This Christmas, you can be Santa for someone special with BTC. Every time you pay up, sign up, or top up, you have a chance to win great prizes for someone important who needs it. Every day, one lucky BTC customer will be called at 8.15 a.m. live on 100 Jams. Be Santa with BTC. During the holidays, there are moments we like and dislike. But the moments we enjoy the most are the ones we all just like, like, like. Enjoy KFC's festive big bar. Two pieces of crispy chicken, two spicy wings, fries, a buttery biscuit, chocolate chip cookie, a 22-ounce drink, and our new cheesy mat. All for only $11, including VAT. KFC Nassau, it's finger-licking good. Life is about expecting the unexpected. We can plan as much as we'd like, but the unexpected, it's usually bound to happen. At times like these, you need a friend that's dependable, helping you manage the unexpected and fixing what went wrong. I'm Cameron Palmer, and at FIA, we're much more than your average insurance agents. We're your friends. Find a friend in FIA today. Freeport Insurance Agents and Brokers Limited, where we specialize in you. Freeport Office, 21B West Mall Drive, Nassau Office, Shirley Street and Shirley Park Avenue. What if you looked in the mirror and saw something different? A small difference, a big difference. What if that difference changed your life forever? What if it caused you to question your beauty? 
Your body may change, a small change, a big change, but your life is defined by your interior, not your exterior. I felt, I called, I tested, I acted, I won. I am the cure, a living story of survival. Be the cure, live the life you love and love the life you live. At Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center, your life matters. This portion of the news brought to you by Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. Well, it's back to the shack for the Valley Boys, who were declared the unofficial winners of the 2019 Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade. The group is focusing on the upcoming New Year's Day Parade, which is just four days away now. Uh, Kelsey Johnson visited their shack today and saw firsthand the work that they're putting in for the upcoming parade. If you think this is a game, the Valley Boys say, come play then. Scroll down memory lane with them. Lace up a top and watch it spin. Go skating, bike riding, or jump on board a scooter. Whatever you choose, just be a part of the winning team. Back in the day, you know, we used to do hopscotch and hula hoop and fly kites and shoot marbles and, you know, back in the day. So I try to bring back the memory of... The childhood games, the Bay Street, something new, something different, instead of old things over and over. The Valley Boys are riding the winning wave, gunning for their third straight win. They are the unofficial winners of the Boxing Day Parade with the theme Wildlife on the Great Serengeti. The Valley Boys also captured the best off the shoulder, best banner, and best music titles. Saxons came in a close second, followed by Genesis Warhawks in third, and One Family Warriors placing fourth. Now the Valley Boys aren't about to unplug their consoles just because the Warriors had a similar theme on Boxing Day. In fact, we are doing all games, not one. So you're going to see a variety of games. Uh, so it's just not depicted on one game. Uh, any game that you can depict out, chess, video games, etc., Donkey Kong. It's not that's going to be Mario Brothers. And for those who believe they can recycle their costumes, Ferguson had this to say. Anyone who's trying to cheat, who try to take costumes from Boston to bring over the New Year's Day away because everything was totally destroyed. And even you try to do that, you'll have to pay v paste everything all over again. So to give us the, the persons who don't get our New Year's costume from the start, a fair chance that, you know, that you can bring a bunch of old costumes on the parade and judges don't know and disguise old pieces and then still beat you because it's be hateful to you know you place a whole new fresh piece and someone just grab a couple of pieces from different costumes and put together and beat you. That's be like a little hateful feeling. So this time around, I feel the Valley Boys more strong on New Year's, uh, strong more, more New Year's than Boxing Day. So they let us get the first one. Definitely second one, Valley Boys can win you two straight. Kelsey Johnson and Zedness Network News. Well, it was a second consecutive app for a major Junkanoo parade. For a Category A group, the music makers were absent yesterday. The group would have struggled in the past with a disqualification from 2018 Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade and its lack of attendance from the 2019 New Year's Day Parade altogether. We spoke to music makers chairman Gary Russell who says, like last year, time, logistics and money were all part of the group's issue. Russell says although the group had produced a theme and began costume construction starting the year without prize monies and having to use personal funds and donations was just not enough to get them through. But when you're talking with your supplies which you need to build costumes to get you to Bay Street, um, the bulk of the supplies when they don't sell in the Bahamas, you have to purchase them from the state. You're talking with your rods, your various sizes of rods your contact cement, um, those stuff, they're the major things you need in which to, to get to Bay Street. And, you know, when you don't have the funds to purchase them, it's really tough. You can buy them locally with the prices that's kill you, and you'll be buying them piece to piece, but your supplies which you really need, you know, you have to order them from the states. And at that time, when the government said money was really was released, it wouldn't have been enough time for us to place the order. 
This year, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines came on board with sponsorship. And thanks to this, Russell says the group will be back on bay in 2021. We got approval from the sponsor to set out and, you know, reset the group and be ready for next year. So you will see us from the street parades, all the street parades leading right into the Boxing Day and New Year's Day parade. You're going to see a new music maker. So you're going to see an exciting music maker. Because now we have financial backing. We know where our money is coming from to purchase supply. Um, John Kuno is expensive. And you're talking about the A group, which costs, which will run you into over $200,000. Um, our sponsor is giving us 100000 So we have to raise another 100000 to another 100000 to $150,000 to reduce. So we will have the whole year um, to put things together. Bahamas Air and the Department of Social Services partnering to provide some Christmas cheer for youngsters from a number of children's homes here in the New Providence. The flyaway took place Christmas Day with a national flag carrier flying the children out to Georgetown Exumo. Bahamas Air Chairman Tommy Turnquest says they were happy to bring some Christmas joy to the children and he pledged the airline's support next year. It really is our pleasure at, at this special time of the year to make uh, the plane, um, our crew available, our staff to accommodate, and for you to accompany uh, the children from the various homes. That your homes are filled a little more because of uh, the Hurricane Dorian. Mm -hmm. But if you are able uh, uh, to fill the jet next year, I, I can assure you uh, that we'd be pleased to put on a, a, a jet service. Really, uh, the, the difference uh, that we have to raise in terms of doing it is not that great. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can fill the plane. Now, Social Services Minister, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, called on other corporate citizens to partner in the initiative. This is an opportunity for children who are often not even thought of in the normal scheme of things, but children who have never done this. Uh, I met a young girl, seven, eight years, who said to me, Sir, this is the first time I've been on a plane. This is the most beautiful place I've visited. My hope is that corporate Bahamas will continue to be engaged and we will find the necessary sponsorship to grow this and that other islands will want to compete with Exuma. Well, sports news is right after the break. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, first at 6. This portion of the news brought to you by Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. away from Christmas and as you'd imagine customers are racing to the grocery store trying to make those savings while well, BTC is helping to lighten the load by being Santa for a day. Today we are at Super Value on Golden Gates where we are kicking off the second half of our Be Santa initiative whereas we're coming into the stores and surprising customers with paying off their bills. Thank you BTC for the wonderful gift you have given us. Oh, that's a great gift, man. Compliments of the season. You're all in the spirit of giving. Oh, I'm very happy. This is gonna go a long way. Thank you. It's wonderful because all my every I do everything to PTC, so I feel that like this is fitting for me. Thank you very much. It's real good, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, for the holiday too, you know. Really appreciate it, yeah. Well, this is a season of giving, and, you know, with the passing of the recent storm, a lot of people are still hurting, so we want to be able to give back to the community um, without asking for anything in return. Super Value is buzzing with activity as customers do that last-minute shopping, and they're getting some great help from BTC and a great way to save this holiday season. These are more of the moments to move us. I'm Corbell Piper. Happy holidays, and we'll see you next BTC Connection.
Prime Care's Doctors Hospital Primary and Preventative Care Service based at a Doctors Hospital West outpatient facility on Blake Road, making it your one-stop shop for primary care services. Many people are familiar with going to their primary care doctor to treat colds, flus, cuts and aches. However, Prime Care is all of that and more. Primary care for the whole family involves checkups and physicals, health monitoring and disease prevention, chronic disease management like hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol and asthma, mental health checkups and so much more. Using Prime Care for your primary care needs ensures that in the event you need further care someday, you and your family are already registered patients in the Doctors Hospital Health System with a complete and accurate health record. Prime Care accepts all major insurances and NHI. If you've not enrolled in NHI, you can do so online or at our Doctors Hospital West location. Fuse the passion, the pride, and the rhythm of Junkanoo with the Bay of the Bahamas to answer one question. Who are we? We are Junkanoo. Represent your group today and purchase a limited edition 16-ounce Calic Junkanoo can from your neighborhood 700 Wines and Spirits store or your favorite watering hole. What was that? Oh, no, no, no. That was, that was just a little item, man. Don't worry about that. You trying to kill us, eh? What you mean? Man, you shouldn't be throwing stuff in the ocean anyway. Items like that contain what they call persistent organic pollutants or pops. Yo, look, look, bro. I, I just come here to fish, you know. I finished school a long time, bro. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Hmm? We always out here fishing. The fish eat the pops and we eat the fish. The more contaminated the fish, the more susceptible we are to diabetes and cancer and the like. You even know how to spell susceptible? This is no laughing matter. Pops are in everything. Paint thinner, cleaners, cleaning products. Huh? How, how you even know all this? You, you can't even remember how we get here. Man, my sister worked to the best commission. They got the lowdown on all these enviro mo, 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 mental issues. Oh, you mean Shari? Yeah, I was trying to check you know. What, what they don't miss again? <laughs> This message is brought to you by the Best Commission and its partners. For more information online, visit best.gov.bs. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Amajal Knowles with your first look at sports. Sacramento Kings continuing to slide as they would rack up another loss last night, this time to the Minnesota Timberwolves in overtime, 105-104. to Kings guard Buddy Heald voicing his frustration in the locker room after the game as he logged only four minutes in the fourth quarter. In the first overtime session, as the worst shooting slump of his career deepened on a night when he made 6 of 20 from the field and 3 of 11 from three-point range, Kings coach Luke Walton saying he benched Buddy during key stretches recently because he said he isn't hitting shots and is prone to defensive lapses, while Buddy addressing the media. It seems like, you know, all over the place, coaches don't have anybody... Just a lot of trust issues going on, I guess. Uh, guys not... I'm not going to stop believing in players, you know, so it is what it is, man. They have who they have played out there, and I just got to be supportive. That's why I'm a team first guy, so no matter what, I feel like we should have won that game before regulations, but I'm not the coach, so I can't say anything about that. I'm a common player. I like to be on the court. That's why I'm on the court, right? I want, I want to make plays, make shots. I feel like it wasn't, I wasn't trusted in the past two games to be on the court, so... As a player, like no matter what, I feel it's my job to go there and compete at a high level. And uh, guys know if I'm struggling or not, still got to ride the wave. Well, former Bahamian NFL standout is back home. The 2 4 tune is doing his part to help out in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. Dwar Darling putting some much needed holiday smiles on the faces of some EMS personnel through his foundation. He was able to donate several essential items to the workers that assisted or were personally affected by the monster storm. So what we did through the As One Foundation, we, um, which is my foundation, the As One Foundation, you can check us out at asonefoundation.org. Uh, we got our Amazon wish list together. Um, we asked them exactly what they needed, um, and uh, we came up with a list, and, and we, we went out and reached out to everyone, and, and they went online, bought, and 
bought products and everything that can come directly for the for the Bahamian first responders and and we were just proud to, to help and proud to see the all the work that they were doing knowing that their families were hurting and they themselves were hurting and and in all the devastation that they were going through but still had to go out there and do their job and um, more than proud of, of my aunt and her team and staff and and uh, you know it was it was an honor just to to help out Dr. Alvary Hanna, the Director of Medical Services for EMS, just happens to be DeVard's aunt on what the items truly meant to the first responders. When he heard of what had happened in the Bahamas with Dorian, he jumped right in, wanted to know what he can do to help us. And um, we have had staff here in EMS that have lost everything. They continue to work, continue to um, help to save lives, even though they themselves were devastated. And so DeVard uh, and the As One Foundation kicked in. They sent shipments of relief items, everything from clothing, uh, hygiene items, um, cleaning item, items, um, everything that you can imagine that would be needed. They shipped and sent to us, and so we were able to uh, send shipments on to Grand Bahama, as well as Abaco, to our staff. And then, of course, we have staff who are displaced who are actually working here from Nassau now. And so they were able to get whatever they needed just to give some semblance of normalcy again to their, to their lives. College football news, there are some places in college football where winning 10 games is routine and the standard that the University of Cincinnati historically is not one of those places. 2019 is the eighth 10-win season in program history and it's the third time they've won 10 games in consecutive season. Payment offensive lineman Chris Ferguson and the Bearcats are looking for a win in the Birmingham Bowl next week, which would give them 11 wins. It would be the only second time they have won 11 games in back-to-back -back seasons, just the fourth time accomplishing the feat in program history. The game is scheduled for January 2nd on ESPN. Standing in their way, however, are the Boston College Golden Eagles. And that's when we look at sports on this Friday. Quick check on weather is up next. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center. Bonaventure Medical Laboratory at East Avenue Centerville and Sandyport celebrates 20 years of providing quality laboratory services with timely results. While partnering with your physicians and insurance companies, we have expanded into our modernized facility providing EKG testing, the latest in gonorrhea and chlamydia STD tests, rapid tests, paternity screens, online reporting of results, and also phlebotomy training. Visit or call Bonaventure Medical Lab, open daily at 7.30 a.m. and Saturdays at 8 a.m. or visit our Sandyport or Southside Clinic location. Life is filled with choices. Every choice we make has a consequence. Whether big or small, financial choices have more lasting consequences than most. When we make sound financial choices, we improve our relationship with money and set ourselves up for financial success. Visit GetMoneySmartBahamas.com and learn how to get money smart today. Hardware and Accessories have expanded its brand to include home and hardware essentials. Browse the many aisles for dinette sets, microwaves, bedding supplies, and so much more. We also stock plumbing supplies, electrical fittings and fixtures, and gardening tools for all of those needed repairs. Located East Street South, telephone 392-1121 through 4. Come in and let us serve you today. Hey, y'all, what's up? Hey, what's that? What y'all getting? Listen, I've been waiting to march down some logs here. Hi, I'm Matthew. I will be you guys waiting today. Can I take your order? Oh, I've been doing stuff for some group of dread. Y'all see this? Uh, see, this ain't gonna work. 
Spanish condo. But how though? Don't leave our children with no fish in their future. Protect our sea. Protect our way of life. Protect the Bahamas. To learn how you can help, find us on Facebook at Bahamas Protected. See the future. Time now for weather. In our first look at what we have some tropical moisture streaming from the Gulf of Mexico across the Northwest Bahamas, and that's uh, providing our pockets of rain showers, which will continue off and on right through tomorrow morning. But outside of our studios, we are under cloudy skies. Your temperature 75 degrees, relative humidity at 83 percent. Easterly winds at 14 miles per hour. The barometric pressure of 1,000 at 17.7 millibars. That's 34.05 inches, and it is steady. That's going to do it for your first look at weather. So stay tuned. More weather is still to come. Thanks, Basil. That does it for us in First at Six. Stay tuned, though. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition, straight ahead. Tonight, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama reflecting on the year 2019. Grand Bahama's top cop shares this year's crime statistics. And residents say despite a tough year, they remain optimistic about the year ahead. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. 2019 was an unprecedented year for many Bahamians. Despite some successes, the most dangerous hurricane to hit the Atlantic Ocean brought a new awakening and a change of plans for residents and the government. Tonight, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama reflects on the successes and the challenges that came with this year as he hopes for a prosperous 2020. Shishina Rolf Harkison reports. Eventful. That's how the Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Quasi Thompson, sums up the year 2019. He says in the beginning, it seemed as if it would have been the year of recovery. Early 2019, uh, we saw the uh, improvement of uh, the unemployment numbers. We saw the unemployment numbers go down to 10.9, uh, uh, which was the lowest for several years. Uh, we saw a number of businesses open up. Uh, we saw uh, um, a number of uh, deals, uh, those big deals, move forward. And so we were really on a, on a good track, I think, um, prior to the hurricane. And obviously, Hurricane Dorian um, put a, uh, a real uh, sort of dent in the progress that we were making. But the minister notes that there were many high marks, including the introduction of Western Atlantic University of Medicine, tech companies, and the Small Business Development Center. We have been able to progress the uh, two major developments. Um, we were able to uh, sign the LOI, and we are nearing completion of the Grand Lucayan deal. Sort of pleased with the progress that uh, we've made with respect to negotiating with ITM and with Royal Caribbean. That deal has the potential of transforming Grand Bahama, and so it is very important. It, uh, it's a key um, uh, initiative for the government, and we continue to have that as a high priority to push until that is completed. Uh, we've seen the uh, signing of the carnival, and again, that's one that we are continuing to push, push, uh, because 
Those are major developments for the island, and they will have a major impact for the island. But he contends that much. Um, inspired by the spirit of the Grand Bahamians, who, regardless of the setback uh, for a hur from Hurricane Dorian, uh, they continue to uh, move forward. So I believe uh, we're going to end this year uh, stronger than uh, right after the storm. Uh, um, and so we're looking forward to an even better year uh, next year. Shishina Roll Farkasin, ZNS Network News. With just four days left in the year, Grand Bahamas top cop is reviewing the state of crime on the island in 2019. He is also sharing some of his concerns and the way forward for the new year. Italia Hall reports. Assistant Commissioner of Police Samuel Butler says 2019 was an interesting year for the Royal Bahamas Police Force in the Northern Bahamas. He says they are now in the process of reviewing the various challenges and successes that took place throughout the year. Butler says 2019 will be remembered for many events, adding that the department started the year with a clear plan put in place by the Commissioner of Police. We certainly wanted to tackle uh, uh, a reduction in crime. And, and so there were a number of initiatives that the police department here in the northern Bahamas certainly have followed. Uh, and so when we look generally at a wide scope of operations that were conducted, we feel good that those operations and our police presence in the community have definitely demonstrated uh, the, the ability to drive uh, crime figures in a reasonable direction. He says there's been a reduction in property crimes, and as it relates to crimes against people, he says there are some challenges, but the police department was able to resolve those matters. But there are some outstanding matters pertaining to homicides that took place this year. We would not want to speak definitively about any of those because we, they are still open, and we're doing open investigations on them. Uh, there are trails that we are still following today. Uh, uh, and so we would want to leave those there. Uh, each year we have uh, crimes that are not detected. Uh, but we can speak to the ones that, that are. We feel really comfortable with the level of detection. And uh, again, uh, it speaks again to the connect with the police and the community. There were also a number of shooting incidents that took place over the last 12 months with the recent shooting in West End on Sunday, December 22nd. Butler says that is a concern for police, but he believes that they have control over the situation. Persons were arrested uh, and placed before the court for having in their possession illegal firearms. And, and uh, we're concerned about it because many of those arrests happen in public spaces, uh, uh, particularly surrounding nightlife. Uh, and so it kind of speaks to the mindset of individuals. The police chief says most times crimes on Grand Bahama are committed by young people, and he is asking parents and members of the public to help steer these young people in a positive direction. Because often but once they are in our custody, and you ask a, a basic question, why did you do it? There's no real answer. There's no real answer. There's driven by the moment of emotions to respond to, to, to perhaps demonstrate that I have my quiet strength. I'm not afraid. Uh, and I've seen so many persons who I've had the opportunity to personally go and speak to. Uh, I recognize behind that behavior are good people. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. 
Now, the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Samuel Butler, also giving an update on this shooting incident that occurred in West Grand Bahama on Sunday, December 22nd, around 1 a.m. Reports say a gunman entered a business establishment on Bayshore Road in West End and opened fire, which hit four men about the body. He says there is one person in custody in connection with that incident. There were also two stabbing incidents over the holidays, one in West End and the other in the Smiths Point community. Police say there are several persons in custody for those incidents as well. And as it relates to the recent break-in at Cost Rights, located on Cedar Street on Monday, December 22nd, Butler says culprits reportedly broke into that establishment and stole an undetermined amount of cash around 5 a.m. He adds that there are four persons in custody for that matter at this time. Certainly there was a matter there, a very interesting one. Oh. Uh, and I'll go that far to say a very interesting one. Uh, we have four persons in custody for that particular matter. And I believe you'll understand why it says interesting. We're still working through the process. They're, they're in custody. It's turning to be something that's interesting, uh, unfortunate, but interesting. Uh, and uh, the police uh, want to pride itself that we understand how to do our job. Uh, and so we're satisfied that we've made good progress in that matter. And uh, uh, we feel good in, in a short order we will be asking you to cover a story. In other news, residents on Grand Bahama say they're looking forward to the new year. While it was a tough ending for many, some residents say they're looking toward 2020 with great hope and anticipation. In less than one week, one of the most trying years for Grand Bahama will come to an end. Our ZNS news team spoke with residents who say that while they had mixed feelings about the year 2019, they believe this island will bounce back. I think with the hurricane, I know Bahamas are very resilient and it's been, you know, there's been some ups and downs and I think, you know, we are strong enough to make, we're looking forward and hopeful for 2020. And I think we're going to bounce back from this. I know it, it's hard and it's kind of dismal at times, but I, I believe Grand Bahama is going to bounce back and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it was hectic the last quarter. Yeah, so that's what it is. It started off pretty good, but as you know, it's really bad now. So ain't much most of us could do, but hope for the best and pray that things get better. Residents share what they are looking forward to in the year 2020, including hopes for the entire island and personal goals. So I'm looking for progress in that a lot of people, homes have been damaged, and I'm hoping that they put more efforts in helping the people in Grand Bahama. So as for me, I do renovation and construction work. Work is here for me. But a lot of people still are out of jobs, especially ladies. So I'm looking for the government to help in some way to make employment to allow majority of those who are out of jobs being employed. I hope the economy can start booming on Grand Bahama because it sucks for not just me but a lot of other people. So hopefully the first thing I would like is the economy to start booming and it'll make everything else better. Hopefully, I get married. I'm tired of this. Well, I sure hope for uh, everybody could control themselves and focus on trying to build this place back the way it needs to be because uh, everybody being devastated by the hurricane. If everyone needs a bounce back, I pray to the Lord that it will. I want it bounce back. I want all the young people to get a job. To survive, live and do the will of God. That's all I'm looking forward to. Yeah, personally for myself, I'm looking to get rich. Can you help me with that? Now, as the year continues to wind down and persons are still in a festive mood, these residents had these messages of hope. All I could say is take it to the stride and look, hope for the best and pray that things turn around. Keep your head up. Don't let the hurricane what happened keep us down. But let's look forward for a new year. And hopefully God bless us and it turned out really good for the 2020. Uh, let's tell them stay strong and just keep pushing forward. That's, that's all they could do. 
Tis the season for shopping, and despite the economic challenges Grand Bahama has faced this year, in this report, Italia Hall tells us that some business owners say sales were good this holiday season, and they also believe that business will continue to grow in the new year. The streets were still a bit busy on Friday morning, with residents doing some final holiday shopping. Manager of Parfum de Paris, Carolee Dame, says holiday sales are going very well, considering that they were just able to open their doors on December 20th after being hit hard by Hurricane Dorian. We had two days to get the store back open. We know that our clients were waiting on us, and so we got it back together in time just to open to make sure that we were there for the customers. And really, in spite of Dorian, we had... a uh, Great success, great turnout, people shop, people did what they had to do and it was a success. The 17 shop recently opened their doors as well. Sales associate Marva Black says they stayed open late for the public on Christmas Eve. They shop for church clothing, work clothing, going out clothing, shoes, bags, jewelry. They shop for everything. We had very, very, very good sales and um, a lot of people shop at home, at least here with us, you know, and um, we appreciate it, highly we did, you know, considering what a lot of people went through. Over at Dolly Madison, shoppers were still shopping as well. General Manager James Roll says they were able to offer just about everything that they offered in the main store prior to the storm. We had hundreds of persons coming, okay, and, uh, and that's good, and uh, we really appreciate that. And, um, and that's one of the reasons why we decided that um, it was important for Dolly Madison to get back up and running, because this is one of the staple businesses in, uh, in the Grand Bahama community, and we wanted to make sure that our customers and the Grand Bahama community at whole had access to the um, shopping appetite that they um, so well deserve. Bellevue Gifts, another popular store in Grand Bahama to buy Christmas gifts. Store manager Teresa Tomlinson says with the state of the economy, management is pleased with the support from the community. We ran a 15% off sale that basically helped the consumer to be able to purchase what um, they need at this particular time because we were encouraging people, that was our way of encouraging people to shop at home to help the fuel the economy of Grand Bahama to keep monies here. And all in all, we must give thanks for whatever we get. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Don't go away. There's more news right after this break. This portion of the news is brought to you by Dolly Madison, Freeport's original home center. Dolly Madison Home Center announces the arrival of fridges, washers, and the appliances you need to make your home run after Hurricane Dorian. As we rebuild, we continue to bring in more and more supplies to serve the needs of our Grand Bahama community. Remember, we are presently operating out of our upper warehouse during our store reconstruction process, and we are bringing in more and more supplies daily. Come on now! The Grand Bahama Power Company wishes to congratulate Talia Wild Goose Davis on achieving the Professional Service of the Bahamas 2019 40 Under 40 Award. Talia Wild Goose Davis is employed as a Senior Alive Champion. She's a dynamic and accomplished marketing and event planning professional with extensive experience, as well as a member of the Academy of Special Event Professionals in the USA. GBPC salutes you as an honoree and one of 2019's most influential professionals. Tis the season for Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box. Two delicious medium one-topping Pizza Hut pizzas, five chicken strips, five cheesy breadsticks, and a two-liter Coke. With each Pizza Hut Big Dinner Box purchase during December, enter to win a Kenmore gas stove from Furniture Plus, a 55-inch television, or a brand-new laptop. Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box is available at Pizza Hut Downtown and East Sunrise Highway. Hi, my name is Megan Shepard, senior reporter here at ZNS Northern Service. I'd like to wish you and 
wishing viewers a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The 2020 New Year's Day Junk New Parade just under one week away and the excitement level is still high despite recent circumstances on Grand Bahama. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, announcing recently that the Ministry of Culture has decided to make this year's parade free to the public. He is inviting families to come out early for the start of the parade at 6 p.m. We want to say how pleased we are that uh, we are able now to say that it is free of charge. Uh, the bleachers, we're going to have space for approximately uh, 3,000 persons. And uh, the bleachers will be uh, first come, first serve. It's really going to be a, a celebration. Um, and so we want the uh, general public to come out and to celebrate with us uh, as we enjoy something. You know, it's been difficult. But for a few hours, we want you to just come, uh, even if it means forgetting your uh, challenges just for a few hours, and uh, come and listen to the music, enjoy the dance, and enjoy your family, um, and bringing in the new year. Acting Chairman of the Grand Bahama Junkanoo Committee, Kevin Russell, commending the nine Junkanoo groups that have committed to hitting the Pioneers Way parade route. After the devastating hurricane that we experienced on this island, there was some sense of trepidation when we called all the groups together and asked to find out, uh, get an assessment as to where they are and where we go from there. And they all, from one man, from man to man, came out and said, we'll be there, despite our challenges. And like the minister said, we must commend them even more because they changed their themes to re pretty much recognize the relief efforts that went on in, Bah in Grand Bahama. Hundreds of residents turning out for a major gift distribution on Friday afternoon. The Shaviva Foundation Ministry gave out a large number of toys, clothing, shoes, and much more. Founder of the organization, Minister Lorna Rowe, says this is something that she started doing in the community years ago, but she recently decided to offer even more to the public. Because I love to help people, and I came from a family of giving. My mother was a person gave. So I came from a given family, and I, it's really hurt me when I see people really need help, and I can't help. So I try to support them in whatever way I can. So I started this ministry on a small basis, and then I decided to go a little broader. Her daughter, Anaska Roll, says a lot of effort went into preparing for the event. Actually, it was a long-term effort. We actually started from the beginning of 2019, and we got assistance also from our family members from abroad who was able to help us in gathering some of the gifts. And also because of the storm, even though it caused devastation to Grand Bahama, it brings a lot of blessings because um, my um, sister's company over there in California, when they saw the devastation, they offered, they offered their assistance. And it was so fortunate that we also had this foundation that we're trying to gather up and they said that they're going to help assist us with clothing, food, and toys and everything that we needed. Okay, so what are we closing out the week with in sports tonight? Well, things are heating up in the Kings locker room and Buddy Hill is expressing his frustration after a tough loss last night. Don't go away, those details straight ahead. Esquire Men's Freeport is moving. On December 31st, Esquire Downtown will close its doors and reopen January 6, 2020 in their new location at the Lukaya Shopping Center. The Grand Bahama Power Company wishes to congratulate Sean Elliott on achieving the Professional Service of the Bahamas 2019 40 Under 40 Award. Sean Elliott is the Corporate Communications Specialist at the Grand Bahama Port Authority 
where she has been employed for the past 20 years. She's a firm advocate for mentorship and has volunteered her skills to assist in numerous youth development programs, namely Junior Achievement, where she has been the PR and marketing advisor for the top JA company in Grand Bahama for the past seven years. GVPC salutes you as an honoree and one of 2019's most influential professionals. Gift shop downtown in the Comerville Plaza. Hand bags, accessories, and fragrances for men, women, and kids. Open Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Special orders and layaway available. Call 352 9554 for more info. They got everything you need and more. Feel the excitement in the air. Grand Bahama Christmas is coming. Purchase the KFC Festive Feast. Throughout December, eight pieces of juicy thigh and leg chicken, two large sides, a two-liter Coke soda for $19.99. And enter to win a trip to Atlantis for a family of four in smooth comfort on Western Air. KFC Festive Feast. The more you buy, the greater your chances to win. Happy hours twice a day. Let's start. Let's start with that. We make sure that our customers come. They come at lunchtime. They can have a happy hour there from 11 to 2. Yeah, who do you think is gonna win this game? By the way, the Patriots. I have to laugh. How you see the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another exciting edition of Sports in the North. I'm Ramiko Knowles. Topping sports, piercing words were spoken after the Kings suffered a 105-104 loss to the Minnesota Timberwolves in double overtime last night at the Golden One Center. Buddy logged only four minutes of play in the fourth quarter and one minute 11 in the first overtime session as the worst shooting slump of his career deepened on a night when he made six of 20 from the field and three of 11 from three-point range. The Kings are now on a five-game losing skid. Expressing himself with regards to his performance in the past several games, Buddy says he feels that there are some trust issues as it relates to him playing and voiced his frustration in the locker room about Coach Luke Walton's decision to scale back on his play time. Seems like we're you know, all over the place. Coaches and everybody. There's trust issues going on, I guess. Uh, nah, it's not. Nobody can really stop believing in the players, you know, so. It is what it is, man. I'm a combo player. I like to be on the court. That's why I'm on the court, right? I want, I want to make plays, make shots. I feel like it wasn't, I wasn't trusted for the past two games to be on the court, so. Now with the Kings trailing 105-104, to Holmes set a series of picks to free the Kings' leading scorer. And with a few ticks still on the clock, the, he hoisted a 27-footer for the win, but it did not drop. As a player, like no matter what, I feel it's my job to go there and compete at a high level. And uh, guys know if I'm struggling or not, I still got to ride the wave. Surprise, I don't think they want to put me on. The reason why they put me in because it was down by three, I feel like. But So you need a three-pointer, they call on me, so I just got to do my job. So I'm here to do, do my job. Regardless, I'm a team first guy, and uh, so I got to do my Switching gears now, the Tabernacle Baptist Falcons senior boys basketball team losing their first game yesterday to Y Central High 58-40 in the 37th annual Arby's Classic taking place in Bristol, Tennessee. Now the Falcons has not played since last month and team administrator Norris Bain says it has affected their play. Well, not playing in a month really impacted them, but they recovered really well, played a very competitive team against a state championship team uh, but the air appears so thin so thin that uh, 
they started having trouble breathing, getting up and down the court. They lost a very, very good game yesterday, and they got another one at 2.30 today. But they're doing really good, very proud of them. Don't have their basketball legs under them, not playing for a month. Uh, but uh, they're doing good. You know, very talented group of young kids, and I expect great things from them in the future. Ending on a sad note, a memorial service will be held for the late Keno Williams this Saturday, December 28th at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church in Holmes Rock, 8 Mi in Holmes Rock, 8 Mile Rock at 11 a.m. Keno was a former Tabernacle standout basketball player that was fatally killed in Turks Island earlier this month. The funeral service will be held on January 18th in Provo, Turks Island. And that's your check on sports. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Ramiko Knowles. Until next time, make it a great one. Jamila Mizek and I'm a reporter here at ZNS Northern Service and I just want to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Remember when you're celebrating the season, the greatest gift you can give is love. with the new airport. Please fix the big hotel across the street and get it reopened! Yeah! Happy holidays, holidays from Delican Bay Hotel. Merry Christmas from Sabah. Happy, Happy holidays from Bones Bar. Happy holidays from Fried Fish Castro Bar. My name is Italia Hall, a senior reporter here at ZNS Northern Service, and I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And remember, this is the season to share lots of love and happiness. is certainly one for the history books from controversy to a signal of hope and then disappointment and while there were some signs of recovery optimism was dashed with total devastation we take a look back at the top 10 stories in 2019 hello all i'm Wolf Arkison. and i'm Ramiko knowles it's a year in review and oh what a year I'd just like to say a special hello to Miss Shirley Cartwright and a happy holidays who watches us all the way from Nassau very, very faithfully. Great people in Nassau. Indeed. That's going to do it for us here in the North. I'm Ramiko Knowles. I'm Megan Shepard. Have a wonderful weekend. in the Bahamas tonight, the National Report. The immigration director hits back over international pressure to slacken immigration policy. The drive toward a universal busing system, what the new year has in store. And hear from the Boxing Day Junkanoo champions and those who fell short. The Bahamas tonight, the National Report starts now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keisha Adderley, and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks so much for looking in. Topping the news this evening, the Department of Immigration says it has a job to carry out and that it will do. The director is making his stance on the department's responsibility to combat illegal migration clear amidst criticism from an international body. 
Director of Immigration Clarence Russell says he and the Department of Immigration will fulfill its lawful mandate when it comes to the apprehension and deportation of illegal Haitian nationals post-Hurricane Dorian. His comments come following an October statement by the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights that called on Bahamian authorities to halt deportations for the moment. I do not think, um, as a director and as a citizen of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, that anyone would expect that a small nation of some 300 and some thousand persons would envelope another nation of 11 million plus. Not only would you lose your identity, but it is very probable that you will inherit or in inherit many of the persons who perhaps are undesirables from the other nations. The commentary from the UN came after the Bahamas deported 112 illegal migrants to Haiti in October after government had temporarily suspended deportations to that country after Dorian. In its statement, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights further asked government to refrain from deporting individuals who lack documentation without the individual assessments and due process guarantees to which they are entitled under international law. The Bahamas has also taken criticism from local activist post-Dorian, which Russell also responded to. They seem to have a lot of influence internationally. I'd think, and I can't give them advice, but from where I sit, you would think that they take their case to those international bodies so that they can get the kind of economic empowerment, political stability, and help for their citizens that they need. Obviously, the Bahamas cannot sustain in any reasonable way an entire nation. Following the criticism against the Bahamas, Attorney General Senator the Honorable Carl Bethel criticized that international organizations apply standards to small countries like the Bahamas that they do not enforce in their own countries. After Hurricane Dorian, Minister of Immigration the Honorable Elsworth Johnson announced that the Department of Immigration would replace documents of migrants who lost their papers in Hurricane Dorian free of charge. Russell says not many storm survivors have taken advantage of it. This myth that there are these groups of persons who are in our society who are so irresponsible that they would have lost um, all of their valuables in storms. I can assure you from my personal experience in going into Abaco that everyone whom we would have encountered actually have their status documents in hand. Very few have been found or have said in any way with interpreters to us that they have in fact lost their documents. Cleopatra Murphy, CNS Network News. Meantime, Minister of Immigration, the Honorable Ellsworth Johnson, is advising members of the public to request identification from anyone who presents to their home claiming to be a law enforcement officer. His warning comes after an early morning home invasion l earlier this month where four armed men presented themselves as immigration officers going to a Balfour Avenue home where they robbed and assaulted residents, leaving one man in hospital. He's urging residents to exercise their rights. When persons come to your home, whether they be any of the enforcement agencies, you have a right to ask them to produce, as the director said, proper identification. If you are unsure as to who is knocking on your door, you say to them, just hold on a moment. I want to call the Royal Bahamas Police Force, I want to con or I want to contact the minister or the director of, of immigration or the immigration department. My number is 376-7599, 376-7723. To ensure that the person who is on the other side of your door or who is approaching your property is the right person. The minister says it's his hope that police will not rest until the perpetrators are captured, calling the incident unacceptable. It is despicable. What you did to those persons, they did not deserve. And I'm depending on our police force uh, and on our immigration department to search them out and bring them to justice so that they may be placed before the courts and the right retribution and consequences can be had to them. Police 
police are refuting claims in a video circulating on social media describing a violent incident, the use of knives, and the conduct of police officers at yesterday's Boxing Day John Canoe Parade. Police want to tell the public that the incident described in the video didn't take place during or after the John Canoe Parade. Police say that three men were taken into custody in connection with a minor incident while one of the men was injured, treated at hospital, and discharged. Now, police are encouraging members of the public not to spread false information which creates fear among members of the public and they're encouraging residents to go out and enjoy the New Year's Day John Canoe Parade as the event will be properly policed. Meantime, the Commissioner of Police has indicated that he's been pleased with the performance of his officers at the Boxing Day Parade and has thanked them for their service. Well, final preparations are underway for the launch of a pilot project which will drive the implementation of a unified busing system early in the new year. The initiative is expected to play a pivotal role in improving the overall transportation system. Transport Minister, the Honorable Renwood Wells. It is a six-month program. Uh, as everyone knows, it's a six-month pilot program. At the end of that pilot program, we will know what one franchise is worth. And based on that, the Bahamas government will then move towards a unified bus system. So by the end of June, this pilot will be done. Uh, January 3rd is our launch date. Now, Minister Wells also noted that the concerns of taxi drivers linked to members' license plates will also be addressed in the new year. This after officials from the taxi cab union indicated that members' license plates are the same color as private charter bus plates and self-drive vehicles, and that private charter buses are providing the same service as taxi, drive, taxi cab drivers, which under the law should not happen. The transport minister on that matter. The government will in January um, look as to how we will be issuing um, the requisite plates in line with the recommendations of both unions, the taxi cab union as well as delivery and tour car union. We've met with both unions, met with their presidents and their executives, and they have given us their recommendations as to how they would like to see the industry move forward and how many plates they believe that the industry increase in plates that the industry can sustain. The government and the Seventh-day Adventist Church have come to it's an impasse in negotiations over the land where the Christie administration built the Star Academy, sinking tens of millions of dollars into the project. It was a passion project for the former government intended for at-risk youth. While PLP government officials began construction on the Wolf Road campus and intended to lease the land, a lease agreement was never signed. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, says the government has made efforts to resolve the issue with the Seventh-day Adventist Church after such a substantial sum of money was invested. I am advised by uh, my team that uh, that effort is ongoing so that we could see how there is a resolution. But as you know, it's quite a concern to us that some 20 plus million dollars have been spent and another 10 or so million dollars projected for uh, a property which uh, may not be useful to us in the long term and certainly is not, um, not our own property. It belongs to the, uh, to the um, Seventh day Adventist Church. Still ahead tonight, we'll tell you what the Valley Boys are planning for the New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade. That and more after the break. This portion of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Shell lights up Christmas. What does support look like? What does it sound like when you feel the pulse of a nation? When you make a difference in the lives of strong, principled, cultured people who are driven by hard work and passion. People who build communities where hospitality is warmly demonstrated because this is the Bahamas and we're happy to share our wealth. Commonwealth Bank, built by Bahamians, here for Bahamians. Bahamians helping Bahamians. If there's anything these past couple of months have taught us, it's to value what's important. Value your family, value your friends, value your community, value being together. At BTC, we support everything you value, and that's why we're giving you more so you can build stronger lives. The new Always On Back Inclusive $15 7-day prepaid plan 
gives you unlimited local anywhere calls, three gigabytes of data plus an hour of YouTube data and 30 days of free WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger text. Yes, it's the seven day plan with 30 days of connectivity built in. Value is more than a word, it's commitment. BTC. I love you too. Crispy tender chicken, golden brown fries, and a hot buttery biscuit for $3.99, including that? Wow! The KFC Smart Menu, the $3.99 Wow Box will make you leave everything. KFC Nassau, it's finger licking good. Finally getting the kitchen I've always wanted. This Christmas, I'm getting the car of my dreams. It's time to take that family vacation to Orlando. This year, I'll have more money for presents once I consolidate my debt. You've waited all year, and this Christmas, it's time to get it done with a loan from Scotiabank. Apply today, and you could win over $5,000 in prizes. Come in and speak with one of our representatives, or visit bs.scotiabank.com. Promotion ends January 17th, 2020. portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Well, it's back to the shack for the Valley Boys, who were declared the unofficial winners of the 2019 Boxing Day Parade. The group is focusing now on the upcoming New Year's Day Parade, which is just four days away. Our Kelsey Johnson visited their shack today and saw firsthand the work they're putting in. If you think this is a game, the Valley Boys say, come play then. Scroll down memory lane with them. Lace up a top and watch it spin. Go skating, bike riding, or jump on board a scooter. Whatever you choose, just be a part of the winning team. Back in the day, you know, we used to do hopscotch on a hula hoop and fly kites and shoot marbles and, you know, back in the day. So I try to bring back the memory of... The childhood games, the Bay Street, something new, something different, instead of old things over and over. The Valley Boys are riding the winning wave, gunning for their third straight win. They are the unofficial winners of the Boxing Day Parade with the theme Wildlife on the Great Serengeti. The Valley Boys also captured the best off the shoulder, best banner, and best music titles. Saxons came in a close second, followed by Genesis Warhawks in third, and One Family Warriors placing fourth. Now the Valley Boys aren't about to unplug their consoles just because the Warriors had a similar theme on Boxing Day. In fact, we are doing all games, not one. So you're going to see a variety of games. Uh, so it's just not depicted on one game. Uh, any game that you can depict out, chess, video games, etc., Donkey Kong. It's not that's going to be Mario Brothers. And for those who believe they can recycle their costumes, Ferguson had this to say. Anyone who's trying to cheat, who trying to take costumes from boxing to bring over the New Year's, it ain't going to work because everything was totally destroyed. And even if you try to do that, you'll have to pay v paste everything all over again. So to give us the, pe the persons who don't get our New Year's costume from the start, a fair chance that you, know, that you can bring a bunch of old costumes on the parade and judges don't know and disguise old pieces and then still beat you because it's behavioral to know you place a whole new fresh piece and someone just grab a couple of pieces from different costumes and put together and beat you. That's be like a little hurtful feeling. So this time around, I feel the Valley Boys more strong on New Year's, uh, strong more, more New Year's than Boxing Day. So they let us get the first one. Definitely second one, Valley Boys can win two straight. Kelsey Johnson and Zedness Network News. Well, while the Paradise Games Valley boys are still in celebration mode over their victory, second and third place finishers uh, of the sold-out Boxing Day Junk New Parade, the Saxons and Genesis Warhawks are reflecting on the loss, their challenges, and what stood out during their mesmerizing performances, as LaDon Davis tells us. The Shell Saxon superstars may have lost by a little over one point to the Paradise Games Valley Boys on Boxing Day morning, but the fierce competitors say they had no challenges and put on one of the greatest performances on earth for their fans and spectators. The veteran John Canoe group made his presence felt on Bay by graciously executing their theme, joining the fight against cancer, with a beautiful array of costumes depicting all forms of cancers. Public relations officer Candony Campbell Moss says one of the highlights of the Boxing Day performance 
performance was showcasing cancer survivors. But you know, things happen and we came second and we're very thankful for that. We want to thank, of course, our sponsors, our members, because without them, nothing could happen. We were a unit uh, for that actual parade. We've worked very hard and very long to get where we are. We have bounced back. And the Saxons that you would have seen on Boxing Day were the Saxons of old. The spirit, the essence, the love, it was all there. Dr. Leah Campbell, we had Gandhi, and those women are phenomenal in their own right. Uh, Gandhi has suffered tremendous loss. Dr. Leah Campbell, her mom has died from cancer, and she is also a cancer survivor. And these are pioneering women. These are women that we've placed on our banner to say, listen, they have overcome a, a terrible odd, and you can as well. But it, it also speaks the to, to, to the tenacity of, of an actual woman, of what you can get through. And as you see, women are emerging in John Canoe. Meanwhile, third place finishers, the Genesis Warhawks say inclement weather put a damper on their Boxing Day performance of a wedding a road to forever. But their third place is quite acceptable. However, they remain hopeful that the New Year's Day John Canoe Parade is more favorable. We came with the, the illusion of coloring with feathers and uh, once the rain would have wet the feathers, we would have strength and, you know, pretty much um, come in as, as a smaller version of a coop with all type of feathers. So pretty much the rain itself, it dampened our spirit and it dampened, you know, the colors, the feathers, the momentum. Because after you have spent over six to seven months in the shock, just for that one, two minutes of rain, you know, John Canoe is not um, conductive, it's not weatherproof. So the crepe papers itself, the colors start running and the feathers start shrinking, you know, that itself was a challenging, that was a challenging move to go on the parade. Both major John Canoe groups say their main focus now is a New Year's John Canoe parade. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. Well, it was the second consecutive absence from a major John Canoe parade for Category A group, the Music Makers. The group would have struggled in the past with a disqualification from the 2018 Boxing Day Parade and its lack of attendance from this 2019 New Year's Day Parade altogether. We spoke to Music Makers chairman Gary Russell, who says, like last year, time, logistics, and money were the issue. But when you're talking with your supplies, which you need, to build costumes to get you to Bay Street, um, the bulk of the supplies and they don't sell in the Bahamas. You have to purchase them from the state. You're talking with your rods, your various sizes of rods, your contact cement, um, those stuff. they the major things you need in which to, to get to Bay Street. And, you know, when you don't have the funds to purchase them, it's really tough. You can buy them locally with the prices that kill you. And you only be buying them piece piece, but there are supplies which you really need. You know, you have to order them from the states. And at that time, when the government said money was ready, was released, it wouldn't have been enough time for us to place the order. Earlier this year, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines came on board as a major sponsor of the music makers. And thanks to this, Russell says the group will be back on bay better than ever before in 2021. We got approval from the sponsor to sit out and, you know, reset the group and be ready for next year. So you will see us from the street parades, all the street parades, leading right into the Boxing Day and New Year's Day parade. You're going to see a new music makers. So you're going to see an exciting music makers. Because now we have financial backing. We know where our money is coming from to purchase supplies. Um, John Kuno is expensive. And you're talking about the A group which costs what will run you into over $200,000. Um, our sponsor is giving us 100000 so we have to raise another 100000 to another 100000 to $150,000 to reduce. So we will have the whole year um, to put things together. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This 
is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Crystal Darling. Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas continue to forge ahead with post-Orion relief efforts. This week, Rotary officials announced that in total, they have been able to produce 250,000 gallons of fresh drinking water, 50 containers of supplies, and facilitate mole remediation programs on the ground. In other news, Bahama Resort has announced that they will be hosting their inaugural Bahamas Culinary and Arts Festival on April 30th, 2020. The four-day event is in collaboration with Meredith Corp's luxury lifestyle brands, food and wine, travel and leisure, and will feature superstar chefs and respected artists. And in international news, the Nintendo Switch came out on top in the U.S. this year as the best-selling video game hardware platform. Game researchers say the small handheld device that was released in 2017 was the only platform showing year-over-year -year growth. The gadget that similarly resembles the company's older Game Boy device has brought a bit of nostalgia to older players. The more recent and cheaper Nintendo Switch Lite has also been gaining popularity in the gaming market and is expected to be another success. This has been your Ralph Delty Business News. I'm Crystal Darling. When you come with the new airport, please fix the big hotel across the street and get it reopened! Yeah! Happy holidays from Delegan Bay Hotel. Merry Christmas from Sabah. Happy holidays from Bones Bar. Happy holidays from Fried Fish Castro Bar. Welcome back. Bahamas Air and the Department of Social Services partnering to provide some Christmas cheer for youngsters from a number of children's homes here in the capital. The flyaway took place on Christmas Day with the airline flying the children to Georgetown Exuma. Bahamas Air Chairman Tommy Turnquest said they were happy to bring some Christmas joy to the children and he's pledging the airline's support again next year. It really is our pleasure at, at this special time of the year to make uh, the plane, um, our crew available, our staff to accommodate, and for you to accompany uh, the children from the various homes. That your homes are filled a little more because of uh, the Hurricane Dorian. Mm -hmm. But if you are able uh, uh, to fill the jet next year, I, I can assure you uh, that we'd be pleased to put on a, a, a jet service. Really, uh, the, the difference uh, that we have to raise in terms of doing it is not that great. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can fill the plane. Social Services Minister, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, called on other corporate citizens to partner in the initiative. This is an opportunity for children who are often not even thought of in the normal scheme of things, but children who have never done this. Uh, I met a young girl, seven, eight years, who said to me, Sir, this is the first time I've been on a plane. This is the most beautiful place I've visited. My hope is that corporate Bahamas will continue to be engaged and we will find the necessary sponsorship to grow this and that other islands will want to compete with Exuma. Well, stay with us. There's more news after the break. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report.
BAF Financial has been securing the lives, assets, and hopes of Bahamans since 1920. As we approach the celebration of our 100th anniversary, we wish to take this opportunity to thank all of our clients for trusting BAF to continue to provide financial solutions for life. We have built a strong legacy, a company that has endured for 100 years to become 100% Bahamian owned with more than 300 employees across three jurisdictions. From being your grandparents' choice for insurance through the growth of your family, being there for you for all of your life's events is what we do. During this Yuletide season of giving, let us remember the reason for the season. From our family to yours, we extend season screenings from the BAF Global Group. Our business is all about seeing the big picture, moving beyond age-old traditions for greater efficiency and growth. Building on the strength of our foundation by evolving with technology and innovation. Connecting million dollar dreams with billion dollar opportunities. This is our big picture. What's yours? I love what I do at CBS Bahamas, helping clients choose windows and doors for their homes and businesses. Here at CBS Bahamas, our mission is to provide superior quality windows and doors to our clients at an affordable cost. Build beautiful. Edie's is back in the Bahamas. Can you say yay? Rich, delicious flavors are coming your way. Made with fresh milk and cream, nothing artificial. Edie's is back. Find it at your favorite food store. Clean clothes for the family, uniforms for the baby, suit for mommy and daddy. We want you to press and to clean the suit If you want to look fly, then you want to look clean. If you want to look fresh, that's good to know the rest. Bring on your church clothes and all your work clothes. Bring on your children clothes. That's the wash. Welcome back. Let's uh, go straight to your weather forecast to see what this evening and tomorrow have in store. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Hi, Bas. Hi, Keisha. Well, we had a day with uh, overcast skies and uh, intermittent rains, uh, but that has since let up. But we'll tell you more about that later in the newscast, so stay tuned. But right now, we're going to take a look at temperatures around the family values, and they are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. 72 degrees in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Green Tolkia, 72 in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, 71 degrees, 76 in the Berry Islands and Alistair, Bimini, 76 also in Harbor Island, Rock Sandy, Lutra, Alistair, Canal, and Staniel Key, Kemp's Bay, and Fresh Creek in Central Andros. San Salvador, Room Key, 76 as well, George Standing Zoo was 78 degrees, 78 in Ragged Island, Clarence Town, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, 79, Ackland, 79, Magic Town, and Agua, the Turks and Caicos Islands, all at 79 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Paint Center. In the northwestern islands tonight, easterly flow, 12 to 18 knots, away fights. They're going to be around 3 to 6 feet. High tide takes place at 842 tonight. For the central and southeastern islands, easterly winds, 15 to 20 knots, away fights, 4 to 7 feet. Caution flags are up for the boaters in the central and southeastern Bahamas. And then tomorrow, Saturday, in the northwestern islands, the winds set into rotate clockwise, just a tad east to southeast, speeds unchanged at 12 to 18 knots, wave fights holding at 3 to 6 feet, high tide 9 or 6 in the morning, low tide at 3.36 in the afternoon. Now for the central and southeastern islands, that zonal flow, that is winds from the east, will continue at 15 to 20 knots. The caution flags also continue. And on Sunday in the northwest and central islands, we have a more southeast component at 12 to 18 knots, wave fights 3 to 6 feet. High tide, 9.48 in the morning, the low tide at 4.19 in the afternoon. Now for the southeast, Bahamas, easterly winds once again at 15 to 20 knots, choppy seas at 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. And that's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your travel forecast. And your travel forecast is brought to you by Royal Star Assurance.
And that's going to do it for your trial forecast brought to you by Royal Star Shorts. But stay tuned. Your extended one forecast is coming up in about 25 minutes. This is Ask the Doctor. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt. I received the following question from a concerned dad. My son is 13 and still wets the bed. Will he outgrow this? Are there treatments for this? Thank you for a great question. The first thing to understand is that bed wetting is not an uncommon problem. In fact, the medical term for it is enuresis. Most kids will outgrow regular bed wetting by age four. However, not all children are the same, and bed wetting for a small percentage of kids can last longer, even to age 12 and beyond. While this condition tends to affect boys more than girls, it can be a problem for both sexes. It is important to remember that your child is not wetting his or her bed on purpose. He or she is not being lazy or disobedient. It is also important to remember that no matter how angry, helpless, frustrated, or embarrassed you feel as a parent, your child feels all those emotions as well, and perhaps more intensely. As a parent, reassure your son or daughter that he or she is normal and okay, and remind them that they will outgrow this problem. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. from Christmas and as you'd imagine customers are racing to the grocery store trying to make those savings while BTC is helping to lighten the load by being Santa for a day. Today we are at Super Value on Golden Gates where we are kicking off the second half of our Be Santa initiative whereas we're coming into the stores and surprising customers with paying off their bills. Thank you BTC for the wonderful gift you have given us. Oh, that's a great gift, man. Compliments of the season. You're all in the spirit of giving. Well, I'm very happy. This is going to go a long way. Thank you. It's wonderful because all my, every, I do everything to PTC, so I feel that like this is fitting for me. Thank you very much. It's real good, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, for the holidays, too, you know. Really appreciate it, yeah. Well, this is a season of giving, and, you know, with the passing of the recent storm, a lot of people are still hurting, so we want to be able to give back to the community um, without asking for anything in return. Super Value is buzzing with activity as customers do that last-minute shopping, and they're getting some great help from BTC and a great way to save this holiday season. These are more of the moments to move us. I'm Corbell Pie for Happy Holidays, and we'll see you next BTC Connection. With a cheer, all the best to you in the new year. Jenny O turkeys, $1.79 per pound. Large smoked hams, $2.29 per pound. Hellman's mayonnaise, 30 ounce jar, $3.99. Rosette potatoes, five pound bag, $2.99. Vitamol tonic case price, $23.76. 12 ounce size, 99 cents. Western oils, 48 ounce bottle, $3.99. Happy New Year from Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. When you want to spend money on your tile supplies, who are you going to call? The Tile King. When you tile your house and you want to look good, who are you going to call? The Tile King. Visit the new Tile King showroom, which is internationally recognized as the finest tile showroom in the Caribbean, located in the Builders Mall on Wolf Road. The Tile King. on everything. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.
Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Amish Al Knowles with your TGIF Sports. Well, former Bahamian NFL standout is back home. The 242 is doing his part to help out in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. To our darling, putting some much-needed holiday smiles on the faces of some EMS personnel through his foundation, he was able to donate several essential items to the workers that assisted or were personally affected by the monster storm. So what we did through the As One Foundation, we, um, which is my foundation, the As One Foundation, you check us out at asonefoundation.org. Uh, we got our Amazon wish list together. Um, we asked them exactly what they needed. Um, and uh, we came up with a list and, and we, we went out and reached out to everyone. And, and they went online, bought and bought products and everything that can come directly for the for the Bahamian first responders and and we were just proud to, to help and proud to see the all the work that they were doing knowing that their families were hurting and they themselves were hurting and and in all the devastation that they were going through but still had to go out there and do their job and um, more than proud of, of my aunt and her team and staff and and uh, you know it was it was an honor just to to help out. Dr. Alvary Hahn is the Director of Medical Services for EMS, who just happens to be DeVard's aunt on what the items truly meant to the first responders. When he heard of what happened in the Bahamas with Dorian, he jumped right in, wanted to know what he can do to help us. And um, we have had staff here in EMS that have lost everything. They continue to work, continue to um, help to save lives, even though they themselves were devastated. And so DeVard uh, and the As One Foundation kicked in. They sent shipments of relief items, everything from clothing, uh, hygiene items, um, cleaning item, items, um, everything that you can imagine that would be needed. They shipped and sent to us and so we were able to uh, send shipments on to Grand Bahama as well as Abaco to our staff. And then of course we have staff who are displaced who are actually working here from Nassau now. And so they were able to get whatever they needed just to give some semblance of normalcy again to their to their lives. And yesterday, the Neville Sevens were held at the Winton Rugby Pitch to pay tribute to a fallen brother of the sport, as well as raise funds for another that was vastly impacted by the game. Some of the players from the Buccaneers Rugby Club spoke on the brotherhood of the sport as well as its future. Well, you know, rugby is, is like you said, you know, it's a team. Everyone, you know, once everyone steps on the field, everyone's a brother. You know, we're going to fight for them. We're going to play for them. Uh, it's all about playing uh, for the guy next to you. Um, and then off the field, everyone win, lose. Doesn't matter the team we played against. We had a little hard time against them. And we all come together. We settle down, talk, party. And, uh, you know, it's, like you said, it's 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 a small community. Um, but we, we, we help each other out. And that's, that's the big thing about it. So, um, uh, we're right now we're trying to build up the youth and hopefully you know we get more more youth players coming in so that way we set a foundation for later on. Just being there for one another and that's why we're trying to also incorporate the youth this year with um, having a little youth tournament as well. Uh, just trying to build rugby in the Bahamas, keep it going. Uh, just eventually we're not going to be able to keep on doing it ourselves, right? We're getting old. We want to be on the sideline. We want to be watching the guys out there running. So it's all about bringing the youth in. Um, if you have kids, you know, bring them out here. Every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, we have practices out here at the Winter Rugby Field. So uh, we, you know, encourage parents to bring the kids out. It's a, it's, it's a good family, fun uh, location. Um, and it's, you know, teachers, you know, guys respect, you know, uh, loyalty and, you know, just how to be men in the world. College football news, there are some places in college football where winning 10 games is routine and the standard that the University of Cincinnati historically is not one of those places. 2019 is the eighth 10-win season in program history and it's the third time they've won 10 games in consecutive seasons. Payment offensive lineman Chris Ferguson and the Bearcats are looking for a win in the Birmingham Bowl next week, which would give them 11 wins. would be the only second time they have won 11 games in back-to-back seasons, just the fourth time accomplishing the feat in program history. The game scheduled for January 2nd on ESPN. Standing in their way, however, are the Boston College Golden Eagles. Sacramento Kings continuing to slide as they would rack up another loss last night, this time to the Minnesota Timberwolves in overtime 105-104. to Kings guard Buddy Heald voicing his frustration in the locker room after the game as he logged only four minutes in the fourth quarter. In the first overtime session, as the worst shooting slump of his career deepened on a night when he made 6 of 20 from the field and 3 of 11 from three-point range, Kings coach Luke Walton saying he benched Buddy during key stretches recently because he said he isn't hitting shots and is prone to defensive lapses while Buddy addressing the media. It seems like you know, all over the place, coaches and everybody 
some trust issues going on, I guess. Uh, guys not, nobody can really stop believing in players, you know, so it is what it is, man. They have who they have played out there, and I just got to be supportive. That's why I'm a team first guy, so no matter what, I feel like we should have won that game before regulations, but I'm not the coach, so I can't say anything about that. I'm a common player. I like to be on the court. That's why I'm on the court, right? I want, I want to make plays, make shots. I feel like it wasn't, I wasn't trusted in the past two games to be on the court, so as a player, like no matter what, I feel it's my job to go out there and compete at a high level, and uh, guys know if I'm struggling or not, still got to ride the wave. Tennis news coming into the Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association's 2019 Giorgio Baldacci Tournament. Kevin Major Jr. knew he had the right stuff to go all the way and regain his spot in Bahamas' men's America Zone 3 Davis Cup team. Major Jr. played through form and would knock off top seed and former champion Baker Newman to clinch the men's championship. Kevin on his plans for 2020. Um, I've set up my schedule. It's looking like maybe either Mexico again or Tunisia for a while and then after that it should be I should be into like mid-March so I don't know I don't really know what I'm doing after that yet. Yo, but Tunisia that's on the other side of the world. <laughs> it is it is but it's it's on clay and they have a lot of events back to back to back and I I play I think I play better on clay but I'm transitioning on to, to mix up my game for clay and hard so I can be better on both services. Yes finances is going to be an issue or? Um, yes, because <laughs> it's, it's expensive, man. But I'm winning, so it, it's helping a bit. And that's when we look at sports on this Friday. Quick check on weather is up next. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. with Rubis Rewards. Just fuel up and swipe for your chance to win free fuel. Cash back in our stores, restaurant and store discounts from our partners, plus prizes and surprises. It doesn't get better than this. Your Rubis Reward tag is free at every Rubis service station in New Providence. Get yours today. Rubis, it's just better. getting the kitchen I've always wanted. This Christmas, I'm getting the car of my dreams. It's time to take that family vacation to Orlando. This year, I'll have more money for presents once I consolidate my debt. You've waited all year, and this Christmas, it's time to get it done with a loan from Scotiabank. Apply today, and you could win over $5,000 in prizes. Come in and speak with one of our representatives or visit bs.scotiabank.com. Promotion ends January 17th, 2020. Christmas, you can be Santa for someone special with BTC. Every time you pay up, sign up, or top up, you have a chance to win great prizes for someone important who needs it. Every day, one lucky BTC customer will be called at 8.15 a.m. live on 100 Jams. Be Santa with BTC. Say no. Say no. To violence against women. It is only together as women and as men that we can stop violence against women. The Zonta Club of New Providence wishes to start the conversation and to encourage you to take action. Many people grew up in households of violence. They watched their mothers do it, they watched their fathers do it, and they too were victims of violence. I was a victim of violence. I got help. You can get help too. Say no to violence against women. If you are the victim of violence, know that there is help available for you. If you are the perpetrator, know that it is not too late to change. Recognize the signs in others and yourself. These include physical abuse, abusive language, and unhealthy behavior, financial abuse, and taking away privileges. We need to have this conversation. Say no to violence against women. The Ministry of Health wishes to advise members of the public that prevention is key during this flu season. 
Practicing good cough hygiene can make the difference between you and your loved ones getting the flu or spreading the influenza virus. Good cough hygiene habits include covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and proper disposal of the tissue in a trash bin. Coughing or sneezing into your upper sleeve near your inner elbow and not your hands when a tissue is not available. Avoiding the use of handkerchiefs and towels as they hold germs, becoming a nest for the virus. And frequently washing your hands with soap and water, which is listed as one of the most important steps you can take to avoid getting sick and passing the virus on to others. If you have any questions about how to practice good cough hygiene to avoid catching or spreading the flu, contact your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Oh, no, 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 that was, that was just a little item, man. Don't worry about that. You're trying to kill us, eh? What you mean? Man, you shouldn't be throwing stuff in the ocean anyway. Items like that contain what they call persistent organic pollutants or pops. Look, look, look bro. I, I just come here to fish, you know. I finished school a long time, bro. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Hmm? We always out here fishing. The fish eat the pops and we eat the fish. The more contaminated the fish, the more susceptible we are to diabetes and cancer and the like. You even know how to spell susceptible? This is no laughing matter. Pops are in everything. Paint thinner, cleaners, cleaning products. Huh? How, how you even know all this? You, you can't even remember how we get here. Man, my sister worked to the best commission. They got the lowdown on all these enviro mo, mo, mo mental issues. Oh, you mean Shari? Yeah. I was trying to check you know. What, what they done with this again? <laughs> This message is brought to you by the Best Commission and its partners. For more information online, visit best.gov.bs. Join us for this special Christmas edition of Caribbean Passports right here on this station. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Your risk of developing colon cancer is increased if you have a personal history of colorectal cancer or colon polyps, a family history of colon cancer, or inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis. Other factors that can increase your risk of developing colon cancer are low fiber, high fat diets, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. You can take steps to reduce your risk of colon cancer by making specific lifestyle changes. Eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. These foods contain fiber, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants, which may play a role in cancer prevention. Drink alcohol in moderation or not at all. Do not smoke. Exercise with a goal of getting in at least 30 minutes each day. If you've been inactive, start slowly and gradually build up to 30 minutes. Also, talk to your doctor before starting any exercise program. Maintain a healthy weight. If you're at a healthy weight, maintain it by combining a well-balanced diet with daily exercise. If you need to lose weight, ask your doctor about healthy ways to achieve your goal. Colon cancer screening can also help to prevent colon cancer or lead to its early detection when treatment is most effective. 
If you're 45 years or older, speak to your doctor about having a colonoscopy or some form of colon cancer screening that may be appropriate for you. I'm Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper. Pay attention to your health. Get the facts and discuss colon cancer with your physician today. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Mom, guess what it is? That's me. Bartender, do you see me? I own television. I gotta tell my girlfriend I own television. Hello? Babe, turn your television to ZNS. Quick, I own television. I don't have a TV in there. We have Wi Fi, though. We have Wi Fi. Th that's fine. They upgrade now. You can watch it live from your phone. You just have to download the app. All right, hold on. Go to the app store, type in ZNS, download the app, and you'll be able to watch ZNS straight from your phone. Are we able to over there? Get your news and more anytime, anywhere with the new ZNS app. Stay connected from around the globe with our live stream news updates, all in the palm of your hand. You can also listen to the ZNS radio network for your favorite music. Go into your Apple or Google Play Store and download the ZNS app today. Does it get? Miss <laughs> Isa Stan, now I still got to pay? Time now for weather. In our final look at weather, we're going to get you started with our satellite picture. We have lots of tropical moisture streaming across the uh, island chain, and that's been providing uh, periods of uh, light rain, and that will be off and on uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. But by afternoon, we expect things to start to dry up a bit. And uh, the winds, however, will remain quite brisk, so caution flies up for both us in the central and southeastern Bahamas right through the weekend. We also have a frontal system that's heading our way, but that would not get in here until sometime on late Tuesday, early Wednesday morning, which means it could pose a little problem for the John Canoe Parade on New Year's Day, but we'll keep you posted on that come Monday. We'll bring you up to speed on whether that will continue to pan out. Our forecast for tonight calls for mainly cloudy and breezy conditions, 40 showers in the forecast tonight, a low temperature getting down to 72 degrees, and tomorrow we're looking at a mix of cloud and sunshine, but more clouds than sunshine. Still on the breezy side with those 40 showers, as we said, during the morning hours, but by early afternoon, thanks just start to dry up quite nicely. High tomorrow should get up to 80 degrees and your extended weather forecast over the next seven days. Showers into Saturday morning, but Sunday's looking a lot better with a lot more sunshine. Those daytime temperatures remaining in the 80s right into Tuesday. Frontal system goes through either late Tuesday or early Wednesday morning. Thereafter, the temperatures will drop just a short bit down to about 79 degrees on Wednesday. Low temperature around 69 degrees and we expect a warming trend again as we head into the uh, following uh, weekend. So it looks as though the weather's going to be quite nice once we get past uh, New Year's Day. All right. Well, that sounds good. Thanks a lot, Basil. That does it for us in the Bahamas tonight. On behalf of all of us, thanks so much for looking in. Have a good night. Watch the ZNS network of channels absolutely free.